From Brock Adventure Park in Houston, Texas, it's Tournament Central on the Disc Golf Network. Grant Zellner alongside Nate Perkins for the 29th annual Texas State Disc Golf Championships presented by Lone Star Disc. Nate, it's a beautiful weekend for mm -hmm. disc golf. We dodged a little bit of weather not so very long ago, just up the highway in Austin. First things first, how are things looking for day one of action? Well, first, I just I love what the phrasing right there, Brock Adventure Park. Uh, <laughs> I have to be honest, Grant, when when you're driving through the heart of Houston, you know, on on a weekday to to get to this course, it it's a lot. There's there's five million people in the greater Houston area. There there are two giant highway loops around downtown Houston. There's just a lot going on. It feels hectic. There were giant billboards that told you where to exit to go to the PGA Tour event, which is happening in Houston at this time. I didn't see any billboards for the disc golf exit, but was able to find the exit. And you're you're on the northeast side of town. You're about you're about 12 miles from downtown Houston and it's kind of a rough part of town. It's a little industrial. There's some oil refineries, a lot of old machineries, a couple junkyards and a landfill. And then you pull into the course and all of a sudden there is this like wave of relief because Brock Park, it used to be an old ball golf course, now turned disc golf course. And it really does feel like a diamond in the rough. There are just, there's massive pine trees. There's bald cypress surrounding the bank of the pond right there that we're looking at. And it does feel like you're in your own world. There's no cars driving by while players are putting. It's a special place. I'm really happy we're here. And what we get this week, Grant, is another FPO specific layout. Okay, it's hard to find that through, throughout the tour. This is a Neil Dombra design, the same co-designer that designed the Harvey Pennant course that we were at just a few weeks ago. Well, I noticed, you know, last year this was a silver event and this year it gets a promotion. I have to assume at least a portion of the decision making in promoting this event to a full points event on the Disc Golf Pro Tour has to do with the quality of the course itself, the quality of play. And to your point, the, the design specifically made for both the NPO and the FPO field, you know, what can you tell us about those design tweaks in particular for this morning's round on the fpo field what is it that makes the course so great for the fpo field it's more than just a distance change yes you know that's the first thing i would put my finger on is that the the distance necessary to score isn't obviously isn't as high as the mpo and that allows more players deeper into the field to have a chance to score we have players that are already out there right now and over half the field is under par but more important than just the you know the distance to score it's it's the way that it, it sets up the landing zones out at 300 to 350 versus having to shape something upwards of 400 feet and then it's just kind of the shapes that are required like it it's not an easy course by any means, but it, it, it's just a fun track where a player in that 920 to 950 range, which is like right at the middle of the FPO average field this weekend, they can pretty much score on any hole. While it's hard to kind of find that balance out there on the tour of, do we want to kind of push and make this FPO course like cater more towards the players that can throw it 400 and even 450 feet and kind of push the FPO game forward. And if we do that, we're going to have less scoring. So I feel like Brock Diamond kind of has that, that balance of, hey, we're going to have some holes cater to the distance throwers, but the majority of the holes, anybody that is signed up in this field can score out here. And that's what makes it, you know, a Texas shootout.
It seems like players with different combinations of skill sets can each find places where they can be successful somewhere during the course of these 18 holes during a round. And of course, players that find themselves able to be consistent across multiple skill sets, those tend to be the players that make their way to the top week in and week out on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. Let's talk about one of those players that has been a mainstay near the top week in and week out and finally broke through for her first major victory, uh, that first PDGA major being the U.S. Women's Disc Golf Championship and the player, of course, Missy Gannon. Missy Gannon putting together an incredible week, really having to fend off some other players through mm -hmm. interesting weather conditions on a very challenging sort of first loop around a virgin course last week yeah and that's a great shot of her right there grant collecting her focus that's the name of the game isn't it just collect yourself before you let it fly and you know the the sea's kind of parted for her last week like Kristen kind of being you know uh, not in it a little injured the door seemed to be wide open and evelina who has been putting really well over the last month and a half just didn't capitalize but missy just makes putts she just is consistent grant which we have seen that is what led her to win two championships two stunts and throw she just rises to the occasion when she needs to she wasn't necessarily scoring in that final round, but when she had to make a 25-foot comeback cut in the win, she did. So she didn't falter. And her and Tom holding the trophy right there. We, I feel like we all knew. It was almost a formality in my mind. Throw Pink felt like a major ledge stone in the tour championship. So congrats to Missy for being able to check off that major box right there. And Grant, she was actually at the Memorial Championship yesterday, she was sharing stories of Scheffler knocking down some birdies. So got her a little bit about what that DGA Tour experience was like compared to where the DGPT is at. There's a sport that we're gonna kind of follow the footsteps at, of what the spectator experience should be like, like what the player experience should be like. So pretty cool to get to chat with her about that event that is happening in Houston this week and another player that we need to talk about grant is last year's champion Sai ananda grant what did you see from Sai last week we got to see her on some coverage as she shot that mm -hmm. thousand rated round during round one well, one thing that I always think of when I think of Sayananda is her attitude. She has a, a a grateful attitude when she's out on the disc golf course. Some people may not know that she has compiled more than 50 wins as a professional disc golfer, but a great portion of those wins have come in her home region of the Pacific Northwest where she has balanced disc golf with holding down a real job. She's worked at Taco Bell to help fund her way around the tour. She sleeps in tents at KOA campgrounds when she's on the road. She shares a minivan with a friend and it's a minivan that you never can be quite sure if it's gonna make it to the next town on the map. She has such a grateful attitude when she is out competing. And I think that that blends into her style of disc golf. It's a very joyful style of disc golf. It's a very low pressure style of disc golf, but she'll tell you in her own head, she is grinding and she is thinking very, very clearly about what she needs to do. I think there's something to be said about a player who can grind that much mentally, but externally can just exude such joy. I think it, I think it ble uh, sort of bleeds off onto the players around her. It certainly impacts me when I'm fortunate enough to get to spend some time around Sayananda. And uh, I think that it lended itself very well to her success at this track last year. Yeah, and I'll never forget, Grant, getting to interview her <clears throat> on the 18th green. I mean, when, when you get to talk to someone when they're having the best moment of their life, and the very first thing that Sai said was gratitude. That was the first thing that she expressed for her card mates and for, for her entire disc golf journey. And, you know, it, it seems like a, a lot of players just 
they have their their moment i you know i remember there's there's a coming out party when it when a player has something like this like i remember eagle mcmahon back at the glass blown open like i remember the moment you know where james conrad you know a u.s title like just oh he's a contender he could be a contender every week and now Sai ananda all of a sudden it's like where where has she been she can just putt from 50 feet and in she can she can shape like Corey Ellis with, with a half run up. So we learned a lot about size, true potential last year at this event. And honestly, 14th place last week is, you know, for some people, not a win, but I, I would chalk that up as a win. That was her first event of the season. She shoots a thousand rated round to start it. It's rare for a player to start their season off with a major she's 1800 miles away from home so we got to talk with her a little bit about what she thought about that 14th place finish and starting her season off at the major so let's go ahead and take a listen to what she had to say yesterday what did you learn from your 14th place finish at u.s women's oh man uh, not to sweat the little things yeah, honestly, are, are you happy with are you happy with that finish coming out to start your year with the major? Really rare for for any athlete to come start uh, at the biggest event, long way from home. H how do you feel about that finish? I hadn't really thought about that perspective too, traveling so far away and such a large event. But honestly, U.S. Women's brings so much like positivity. I think that. I always really look forward to it and there's there's hardly any ever like nerves I feel like going to US women so even though it was a big major it was a very friendly big major to kind of start with and honestly to have like the thousand rated round right off the bat definitely surprised myself on that one that was not something that I was expecting at all and I think the last two rounds were closer to what my performance was anticipated to be so 14th was in a field of a hundred women fantastic. Some players seem to really not like the stressful situations out of the disc golf course. Uh, Gannon Bird jokingly always says how much he hates pressure, uh, but some players seem to really love it. How do you feel about those moments when you think back to the time that you were competing last year? I think those moments are really formative. You know, to, to hate the pressure is almost to like, I mean, not to, I don't want to like, Oh, bad, but like to hate the pressure is kind of almost to hate the game. Those moments where I have felt the most pressure and the most intensity and the most desire to like um, rise to the occasion, those are some of the most formative moments that I've had in my career. I'm going to write that down on the board that I look at every day when I go to work, Nate. To hate the pressure is to hate the game. I love that from Sayananda. It just reflects what an attitude she has on the course. Uh, we were talking about uh, players earlier, Nate, players that are in contention week in and week out that have every tool in the game. I, I don't think we can avoid talking about one Kristen Tatar when we're talking mm -hmm. about players that are in contention every week. In fact, Kristen Tatar has set the bar for herself so high that a yep. sixth place finish at a major, a major which featured its largest field in the history of the holding of that event, she finished sixth and we talk about it as though it were a down week for her. And maybe by Kristen Tatar's standards, it was a little bit of a down week, uh, but I think that only speaks to the quality that she has brought to the top of the FPO field and to the game of disc golf at large. She's still the favorite in any event that she enters. Can you tell us what you've managed to gather about Kristen over the course of the last few weeks and what the prognosis is for her heading into yet another tour stop in the grind? Yeah, Grant, I think you know you you nailed it when she's built those expectations up for herself when i believe she she finished outside the top three just twice last season one of those being in austin and it was actually at austin the first time that she said that she was kind of feeling overwhelmed that things kind of seemed like they were coming at her pretty quick and that she didn't didn't quite have the energy for that that's not something we usually hear from Kristen. I mean, she she seems 
kind of bulletproof. Uh, every time we talk to her, nothing we can throw at her kind of throws her off. But the pace of this season so far has thrown her off. She had a lot going on in her off season. She was able to win at Waco, but for her to let us in, I mean, we don't even have to guess. Like she, she's just dealing with a little bit more. She just feels like she has a little bit more on her plate. She didn't train as much this off season. She hired a manager and she's doing things that are a little bit bigger in her mind than just working on her forehand or, you know, working on her C2 putts. She's over there signing deals with Porsche. You know, she's, she's meeting the, the president of Estonia. Uh, they're, they're working on the Estonian disc golf festival, that event that's going to happen later. But last week, Grant, sixth place was even with all that still a surprise to us because when you dominate all four majors in a year, People just expect that of you. But sixth place last week, what that tells me is that we are still playing golf. And it is not really something that you can dominate. There's only been a few athletes in the history of the sport that have been able to do that. Of course, in traditional golf, you have players like Tiger Woods made that possible. But even today in golf and in golf, which I think can fair comparison, even the best players, they miss the cut. You know, Adi Scheffler, who is under par almost every round, he's not going to just win every tournament. You know, Paul McBeth, who dominated at the top for many years, he's having trouble even cashing these days. Simon Lazat won four events last year. He, he can't find the top 10. It doesn't necessarily say as much about where they're, they're at, but it says where the whole field is at. And so I personally love to see a, a little bit of adversity that Kristen has to face that say that says, hey, if I shoot five under par, that doesn't mean I'm going to win a major, right? I, I need to really play to, to, to my ability to be able to beat these girls because the field is getting better every week. And Kristen showed up to Brock Park early. She's been grinding. We've been seeing her right over here on the practice basket. Asked her how her back was, and she's all systems go. So I think you're right, Grant. I think Kristen Tatar is still the favorite at every event that she shows up at. It certainly is a lot to juggle for players, especially those at the top of the game, juggling all of the responsibilities that come with being one of the best in the world at your field. We're talking about business obligations, sponsor obligations, media obligations. Sorry for my part in that, but not so sorry after all. We've got a lot to go over to continue previewing this weekend's action, including MPO action coming your way where Calvin Heinberg will attempt to defend his Texas State's championship. We'll be right back on the Disc Golf Network with a word from Uplay. Last week, during the Pro Tour's Open at Austin event, Uplay delivered the third Community Connect event. Lead instructor Ella Hansen was joined this time by Raven Klein, Holland Hanley, Missy Gannon, Paige Pierce, and Tom Seven. We chose the first tee of Greater Austin as the program that we worked with, being the fact that it was the second week of spring break in Texas in a row. 52 students attended and two adult coaches on the day. And the best part of it is this was our second year attending the First Tee program and we tripled in the size of attendance of students that got to learn about disc golf. I want to thank all of our partners and sponsors in the Disc Golf Pro Tour for making all these opportunities possible. Infinite Discs for the 30 starter packs donated to First Tee. 60 putters donated by UDisc. Trash Panda 60 minis and of course you play for the curriculum Thank you all for the support and belief. We'll see you in Houston. Cheers to morning walks and upshots at sunset. To good rounds and bad. To high fives and nice shots. To the TDs and AMs that make this game what it is. To beating your rating or your first ace. Cheers to the game we love. But most importantly, to having fun. Cheers to disc golf. Let's go. Let's grow. 
Lone Star Disc. I'm David Wiggins, and in 2016, I set the disc golf world distance record with a throw of 1,108 feet. Whether I'm out in the field measuring a max distance throw, or on the course checking the elevation change for an upshot, I rely on the Eagle Seeker 360 to give me accurate distances. It's the only rangefinder on the market that measures in feet, yards, and meters. It's USB-C rechargeable and features a lithium-ion battery. Visit EagleSeeker360.com to get yours today. Microsoft Teams is presenting the 2024 Preserve Championship and offering a new community platform for disc golf fans. Scan the QR code on your screen to join the Disc Golf Tour Talk Teams community. Members will have until Monday to ask Jeremy Colling a question for a chance to win a Jomez disc signed by Big Germ and a free year of DGN. Germ will be answering that question in that community next week. In the meantime, We'll talk FBO right here on Tournament Central, Grant Zellner and Nate Perkins. We have got an afternoon of action, which will be on a completely different 18 than what you will see this morning for the FBO field, which just mm -hmm. encourages you to join us all day long right here on the Disc Golf Network. Nate, a number of names have been near the top of the leaderboard during the course of this season. And to your point, Nate, part of that is maybe the room that's been left there near the top by a few big names who are still trying to work their way back into form, talking about players like Paul McBeth and Simon Lazat. One of those names that has been up there near the top, Nicholas Antala. Seeing him for the first time this week after that big win in Austin. What do you like about Nicholas's game and how it adapts to this track here at Brock Park? Well, we're taking a look at how Nicholas made it onto Sports Center right there. We won't talk da, da, about da, da, da. The, uh, the manner in which those broadcasters <laughs> referenced uh, Disc Off on that top 10 segment there. I mean, there's really nothing to not like about Nicholas's game. I mean, he, look at this shape on the 18th at Harvey Pinnock. That is just. It, the moment that you can throw a 12 speed driver, 400 feet board flat, you have figured something out and getting it to land flat. Grant, that is taking it to another level and then being able to hit a 11 meter putt. His friends, Vino mm -hmm. Makula, Tuomas, uh, Jesse Niemannen, they were right behind the view of that basket. Nicholas was looking directly at them when he hit this putt right here in the dark. This is one of the most electric points in the season, certainly the high point of his life right there. And, you know, the, the Finns are kind of known for not really expressing a lot of emotion, but the emotion was clear in that video, Grant, and the emotion was clear when I had the opportunity to ask him about Finland. The man got choked up and he told us just how much it meant to be the first MPO player. Got to specify mm -hmm. MPO here. First MPO player from Finland to win on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. He started crying, thinking about the sacrifices that he has made. And he said in his interview that he felt lucky that he had a week off because We've heard players talk in the past just how difficult it really is to win a tournament and then you travel and then all of a sudden you're just <laughs> practicing like you're just back at, a, at another tournament. So thankful that Nicholas got some time off last week to celebrate with his homies that he's cruising around the United States with. And honestly, I feel like he's going to be a contender every week, no matter where we go. Uh, he, he's not the longest player on tour, but it doesn't seem to matter. We, he's got to go through Calvin Heimberg. He's got to go through Ricky Wysocki, who's won Texas States six times. Rick hasn't played here at Brock Park, but no matter what, I like Rick's chances. That's it for Tournament Central, Grant. 
We're back here with the black bellied whistling ducks. We're gonna, I'm gonna get out there on the course. I'm gonna be searching for the gators in Greens Bayou. I'm gonna be looking for those turtles, those big catfish, and those birdies out there on Brock Diamond. Wrapping up things here at Tournament Central, sending it down to Charlie and Juliana in the booth. We'll see you guys this afternoon. Welcome back, everybody, to another edition of Perks Picks. Nate, I got you last week. You did, Brian. You smoked me. But we're here <laughs> at Brock Park. We have a new uh, series of three questions. I'm mm -hmm. going to hit you with the first one, and I'll let you yep. lead. Hole 18 in the MPO division, 405 feet, huge yep. slope, OB everywhere. Yeah. Does it average over or under par on the weekend? What do you think? You know, I think it's really wind-dependent. It's only 405 feet. We've got a, a field of 112 players. If there's no wind out there, for most of the field, that's like throwing darts. I mean, that's a one angle hyzer to get up there. The basket is up on a little knoll and there is OB all around it. But the thing is, it's, it's not gonna be calm. So I'm going over par this weekend on hole 18 for sure. Nate, I'm going to have to disagree with you. I'm going to have to go under par. Uh, and that's really just seeing how good the players are getting across the board. Yep. Like you said, it's a tough hole. But again, our field yeah. is getting better and better each year. So entire scoring average has to come from that bottom half scoring well in the hole as well. I think it can happen. Cool. That's a bold, that's a bold move, Brian. And for number two, we're going to pick two from the MPO division to get the top ten. Now... It's getting harder and harder every week to do this, Brian, because there are so many people that you think are going to just be at the top no matter what. Like Simon wins four events. You think for sure he's going to be getting top 10, but he's not. You know, Kevin Jones once always at the top. It's hard for him to get the top 10 lately. Like, so it's hard to find a safe bet, but there are a few of them out there still. And I'm going with Calvin Heimberg, last year's champion, and then... I am going with, ah, it's, oh, it's so hard. Do I want to go Gannon Bird? Do I want to go Kyle Klein? Rick's here. He's won this championship so many times. I'm going to go with Anthony Barilla. Okay. Cool. All right. That's my guys. I am going to go with Ricky Wysocki again. Rick. We did see him in person. He's here. He's here. <laughs> he's ready to rumble. Yeah, and, and he's fresh. And he's fresh. He's fresh. And I'm going to go with Gannon Burr. I feel like with the wind picking up, the way he likes yep. to throw the driver, I think this place could go well for him if the putter is clicking from yep. all distances. Nate, the final question we have to make a pick on. Hot round total for both divisions. Yep. We have an MPO course. We have an FPO course. Last mm -hmm. year's scoring mm -hmm. made it look like both of them can be, you know, shredded pretty good. Yeah. Better or worse than 11.5 under par? Yeah, this is another tough one. And with the fields being so strong in both divisions, I would normally go the scores are going to be better than 11.5. If it, if it stayed like it, it is right now and all week of practice, we would have to go over better, but I'm going to go worse just because of the wind forecast that we have this weekend. Folks, this is going to be three disagreements here. I do think the hot round is going to be better than 11.5. I think we could see that 1200 par mark. Another battle continues. Let's go. Folks, enjoy your day. Enjoy the coverage. We'll see you out there. Cheers to helping new players to high fives and encouragement, to being a positive light while helping grow the sport. Cheers to you, Ranger team. Thank you. Behold the Eagles crossing disc golf course, a sanctuary where the ordinary transforms into the extraordinary. As each disc takes flight, destiny intertwines with the flight path. But beware, brave souls, for the course harbors challenges that even the boldest must confront. Yet, fear not, for victory and camaraderie 
are your companions on this voyage. Visit EaglesCrossingDiscGolf.com. The Texas Swing rolls on as we descend on Houston for the Texas State Disc Golf Championships presented by Lone Star Disc. We are at the Brock Park Diamond Course. It's a beautiful day here in Houston. Temperatures expected in the 80s and already some hot scoring on the course for our FPO first round. Missy Gannon coming off the win at the U.S. Women's Disc Golf Championship. The first major win of her career. And she is on the course getting ready, trying to back it up and become the first player to win twice here in the 2024 season. As we welcome you inside the broadcast booth. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for being with us. Alongside five-time world champion Juliana Corver, I am Charlie Eisenhood. And Juliana, it's been an awesome start to the season so far in FPO. Missy Gannon gets her first career major win. Now she comes back to an Elite Series event. Maybe a little bit of an emotional come down. How does she manage that transition, do you think? Well, I can see it going one of two ways. I mean, it could be either extreme. She could be still basking in the glow of the win and maybe not focused for today's event and maybe kind of overlook this week. Or perhaps the fact that she just achieved her year-long goal of winning a major. Uh, maybe now everything else is gravy, and that's a relaxed state, which potentially is a great place to be for good shooting. Well, she certainly looked good last week. She matched her career-high event rating at 1,004. She did it previously at Worlds last year, where she came in second place behind Kristen Tatar, but she was dialed in throughout the weekend. Beautiful drives. The putting was strong. Really just the most consistent player in the field. That seemed like the difference maker. I, I think that's the key to the event. Uh, the course was extremely difficult, called for very precise lines, and keeping it in the fairway and out of the out of bounds was the key. Windy rounds, maybe a little bit of foreshadowing for this weekend as there is some wind expected in the forecast. Again, and safely onto the island on 17 and walked it in on 18. First official major of her career and that is certainly a feather in the cap, but it's been a fantastic career for Missy so far, even without that. Absolutely it has. She's now checked off almost all of the boxes. Perhaps only Worlds is left. Two-time Disc Golf Pro Tour Championship winner. She won the Player of the Year Award in 2021. And as amazing as Kristen has been over these last two seasons, Missy has really kept up in the money department since 2020, only $10,000 in cash earnings behind Kristen, and now takes down $12,000 at last weekend's U.S. Women's Disc Golf Championship. And interestingly, for the first time in her career, she is now the tour points leader after the major Eight. win, worth double points. So she's ahead of Evelina by just 4.87 points. It's early. But as consistent as she is, it's almost more surprising to me that this is the first time that she has been the points leader, rather than that um, we're surprised that she's there. Let's take a look at Corver's Keys presented by Black Ink Discs. Control the ground play. There are a lot of holes out here that are surrounded right, left, and behind with out of bounds. And some of those are rather thin. So if you uh, have a skip right or left when you land, that could be trouble. Read the wind. Uh, we're expecting to have quite a bit of wind this entire week. So being able to control your shots in the wind is important. And build equity. There are a lot of holes. Actually, I think every single hole out here is birdieable. So build up those under par uh, 
shots and save them for um, the tournament. This is important. Tied for second right now, Henna Blumrus teeing off on the 11th. Big shot from Blumrus as she's out to a great start. What a gorgeous day here in Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Texas State Disc Golf Championship presented by Lone Star Disc. This is your chase card and we are now live on the box. Leading us off. Own Scoggins at the Open at Austin setting the record for the highest event rating in FPO history. Anything in the short grass is just fine on this shot. Next on the box, Evelina Salonen. Riding the right side, bringing it back to the middle. That is an excellent box, shot. That'll set Emily her up Weatherman. nicely for a potential birdie on this one. Emily. Emily Weatherman, you just heard from a spectator. Happy birthday. She turns 18 today. release for Sinagini, but safe. Back to the 11th. Blomrus after the booming drive, throwing her second shot. Yeah, I had a yeah. nice shot. Hannah putting herself in a position to be able to see the basket, which is now on the left side of that mound and no longer on the top. Take a look at our can of current conditions, 69 degrees, light winds, and having stepped outside about 10 minutes ago, the sun is already very warm. I mean, if you are in the sunshine, it feels more like 75 to 80, and it's going to warm up today. I'm sure that's a welcome sight for the players. It's rained at every tournament so far this season. It has been overcast in Texas, and it's been a little bit chilly. Tricky footing for Leah there. You see there's a little bit of a ditch before the sidewalk on the left. So her feet are at an angle that she's not used to during the run-up. See there at the top of the leaderboard, Anakin Sten. She started six under through seven holes. As we go back over to 11 to tie the lead, Blumrus. Got it. Solid putt from Henna. She's six for eight from circle one today. Good job. Good job. Okay. Getting just to that line of trees, she's 
70, 80 feet from the basket yet. Nice drive, Emily. Excellent shot by Emily. She sneaks it through the right side, and she's just outside of circle one. Weatherman was in the press conference yesterday, and amazing to see such poise in front of the cameras from yesterday, a 17-year-old, today an 18-year-old. She aspires to be a touring pro and is working hard to get that touring card. Better height on that shot for Leah. And now we'll get to Evelina's drive. Evelina has plenty of power to get to the basket from here. the green. Chip forehand for Salonen. Who of course won the first tour event of the season at the Chess.com Invitational. But there is your co-leader, Anakin Sten. What a start. Uh, this course is very attackable by almost the entire division. Circle two make there on hole four. Putts. But she is up on nine, putting for bogey, and there it is. She takes the bogey on nine and drops into second place. So Hannah Blomrus takes the outright lead at six down. opting not to run that putt. Here's Weatherman. I had the pleasure of playing with Emily in Waco and she's very, very smooth and she was just as poised on the course as she was during that presser yesterday. Ginny misses the par putt. Lead card, teeing off soon. Cheers to morning walks and upshots at sunset. To good rounds and bad. To high fives and nice shots. To the TDs and AMs that make this game what it is. To beating your rating or your first ace. Cheers to the game we love, but most importantly, to having fun. Cheers to disc golf. Let's go. Let's grow. Lone Star Disc.
how things are up here. The Texas State Disc Golf Championships are presented by Lone Star Disc. Cheers to Disc Golf. Well, it's a beautiful day to watch some disc golf, and if you're in Houston, you can still come out. Tickets available now, and if you are not in Houston and you want to catch a Disc Golf Pro Tour event in your area, you can do that as well. Tickets for all DGPT events are on sale now, so you can head over to dgpt.com and grab tickets to an event near you. Just go ahead and scan that QR code for more information. To the second, Evelina Salonen. So back to 12. Evelina, by the way, birdied hole one. We saw that during the break. Henna, your leader, second shot on 12. Rare misfire from Henna. Way too low out of her hand and also looked like she kind of tripped on the run-up. Owen doesn't love that shot, but certainly she remembers fondly hole number two here at Brock Park. Last year, round one, Owen did this. Can't ask for any better, knocking down the ace. And that's a great ace because it was also going to be in a great position to make a birdie putt, even if it didn't hit chains. That's a very good point. Yes, a lot of times an ace is an overthrow. This was not that case. Brock Park has two completely separate disc golf courses for this event. FPO playing here on the diamond layout. MPO plays on the premier course, temporary course, that they're hoping to install permanently, or at least put in permanent tee pads as a part of this overall recreational facility. Second shots there for Cinegini and Weatherman. hole is only 264 feet maybe wondering why those shots are so, so short but there is a little bit of a low ceiling that the players need to throw under and sometimes that results in throwing too low Well low there for Scoggins. Back-to-back -back pars for Weatherman. par putt for Scoggins. Tap in par for Salonen. Back to 12, third shot for Blomroos. That'll be a short tap in for your leader. Sayananda trying to defend her title here at Texas States. She tees off, coming up.
My relationship with Suga, it's just like a family. Sometimes they just surprise send me thing. I'm not even know. When I arrive home, boom, the box. Such a great product, and Zuka's always there for me whenever I need anything. After every tournament, I get a call. No matter the results, they're always there supporting me. They have so many different things that can be a solution for a disc golfer. That was really one of the main reasons why we partnered is because I wanted the best of the best. How do they know I want that? I'm like. Duh, that's how the family is thinking about you. Jonathan, Jonathan, Jonathan. Wow, amazing! Cool, Adam. Excuse me, Hi, yeah, yeah, check this pad out. I think you should use your wrist a little bit more. Why not? Is he okay? Nah, he's fine. PDJ reinvests membership funding into support for programs like the Competition Endowment, Youth and Education Program, and Marco Polo Program, all of which help grow the sport in communities around the world. Get started today. Visit pdj.com slash join. Cheers to helping new players, to high fives and encouragement, to being a positive light while helping grow the sport. Cheers to you, Ranger team. Thank you. Brought back by popular demand, Z-Lite Plastic from Discraft. Discs that you already know and love, now available in lighter weights. Z-Lite, more distance with less effort. Pound's the best of the best. It's the quality, the craftsmanship, the vision for what a bag could be. I don't think anyone's disputing that it's the best made bag. Round one action continues here at Texas States. Hannah Blomroos holding that lead at six under par. But a crowded leaderboard under par today. Exactly. Everybody on that board is under par, all the way down to the uh, top 21 people under par. I think we're going to see scores a little bit lower than last year. It feels like the course has been tuned up a little bit, and they, they shortened some of the holes that didn't have a lot of birdies last year. They made those mound holes a lot easier to putt on. Yes, those mound holes, that's going to make a big difference. In, I, we're not going to see the blow-ups that we saw in those holes. Welcome to the Texas State Disc Golf Championship presented by Lone Star Disc. This is your featured card. Uh, teeing off first, Kristen Tatar. <laughs> World number one just lost her five straight major win streak last weekend at U.S. Women's. Trying to bounce back. That's far enough down the fairway. She has the strength to still get to the pin. I like the shape of that. 
She had it in the air, which could be a little scary with the tailwind and the OB on Next the left, up, but she put that Texas State left to right gentle Sai turn, Ananda. so it really had no chance with going out of bounds. Sayananda got her first tour win here last year when played as a DGPT silver event. But she beat Kristen Tatar in the field. Beautiful placement. Hard right, to tell how far that off. was. Missy Gannon. <laughs> Missy Gannon celebrating her 39th birthday today. A major win, and then your birthday, same week. Good stuff. Awfully nice, nice birthday present. Very sticky grass here at Brock Park as we check in with Emily Weatherman putting for birdie. You bet. She gets under par. Knocking it down from circle's edge. And we get a chance now to check in with the third member of our broadcast team. Nate Perkins is with Missy Gannon. Nate? Oh, Missy, uh, we need to we need to sing, right? It's your birthday. <laughs> How's it? Happy birthday, by the way. You 35? Yeah, 35. Yeah. Uh, finally meet, hit that mark. But yeah, great. <laughs> it's been a great week yeah. and great everything. I'm just so you. You went to sorry to cut you off no, there. You you went to the Memorial Championship yesterday. You were you were sharing videos of Scotty Scheffler knocking down birdies. How was that PGA tour? Yeah, the Houston Open was sick. Um, never been to an, a, a, an event like that before, so uh, it was really cool to get out there and watch some big time pros. Yeah, and how does Brock Park feel? I, I personally love being back here. Is it you? <laughs> Is it you? Okay, she's out, guys. We gotta let her go. <laughs> All right, well, Missy's going to have to step up and throw her shot. But great to check in with Missy. And my apologies. I said she was 39 today. Absolutely wrong. Thank you for the correction down there on the course. Didn't mean to add an extra four years for you there, Missy. A little low out of the hand for Missy on the tee shot. sneak it in front of those protective trees. She will have a long putt at the basket. Own Scoggins for but birdie on the third, and she is under par as well. And Evelina makes it two out of three. Kristen second. That shot was low, perhaps pushed down by the tailwind that they have on this hole. Hannah Blomer is putting for birdie on the 13th to get to seven under. Undercommitted there. Mistakes that have plagued Henna on the greens.
to the fourth. Salonen. Perfectly fine. You don't need maximum distance on hole four to be able to get a birdie. Little short of circle one there for Deanne. Overturn from Scoggins. She is safe. There's an OB line a little bit farther on the right of that tree line. She's safe, but she's going to have to maneuver between those trees to the pin. This is a big yes. dog leg left to right. Second shot for Scoggins. That's more like it. Exceptional shot. Beautiful. She'll have a tap in birdie. Kristen puts it inside the circle. Even hitting that tree on her drive, she's so close that she just needs a putter approach. A drop in for Evelina, who is shredding early. So we bounce back to 14, second shot for Henna. There's a little meat on the bone. see from well into circle two for birdie. <laughs> Just five birdies today on hole one. 625 foot par four. Carry can make it six. Not there. Well, that's a familiar face. Paige Pierce hanging out and enjoying watching some disc golf this weekend. Love the appreciation for the division. Kristen in for par. all around. Casey taps in for her par. And Sai also taps in for the par, so Pars all around for our feature card. Sinigini to the forehand. In good position for a birdie. For birdie on 14, Blomroos to get to seven down. Much better putt than the previous hole. More commitment there. Right in the pocket there for Blumroos.
Good extension. Better pace. Puts it on the pole. So she is back to your solo leader at seven under through 14. Tatar, hole two. A little bit early, I think, with the backhand. Typically, you're trying to go to the right of that line of trees. She snuck in before it and ended up left side of the pin, just outside of circle one. She may have a tree obstructing her view, but she is on the back side of circle one. That's the route that I expected Kristen to take with the backhand. the fifth. Another beautiful drive from Evelina. She's trying to go four down through five. deep there for Scoggins, but very makeable range. This hole is only 198 feet. It's easy to go deep if you don't hit a tree. Yeah. Weatherman going straight at it and putting it to about 15 feet. Outside of circle two here for Gannon. Gave that a good chance. Birdie look for Scoggins. And that's what she does. Three straight for Own, and a big smile as she knocks it down from about 40 feet. Didn't look like she was even trying to give that a chance. She had a straddle out to get around that tree. Sinajini putting for birdie on five. And she's got it. Some good putting on display here early. That gets her under par. Kristen looking for her first birdie of the day. chains but it didn't stay in the basket had a nice height it seemed like it just didn't quite have enough on it off the mark for Ananda She'll clean it up, but this has got to be a hole where if you don't get a birdie, you feel like you left one out there. Many of the holes out here <laughs> feel like that. I, it appears like the wind is affecting these players.
Bunch of par tap-ins. We go to 15, Blomroos. Sitting with a one-shot lead over Anakin Sten and Jessica Weiss. That is gigantic. This what is a, a big shot. left to right turn, but you can't make the turn until very late um, in the fairway. Yeah. Just Levin over the rim there. Just sneaks it in. She gets to two down. Salonen trying to make it four down through five. You bet. So that matches Sten for the hottest start through five holes. <laughs> to the third. Tatar. It's not quite the clinical shot making we typically see from Kristen. That's a good placement. There's a nice alley towards the pin on this par four from that position. I actually think three is one where you feel like you left something out there more than two because there's no low ceiling here. And so it's, it's much more a wide open fairway to the pin. And at 315, everybody in the division should be able to get it there. outside the circle for Ananda. Very close to the out of bounds, but yet still safe. The out of bounds does come pretty close to circle's one edge right around the pin. Sixth, Scoggins. That skip was good because that was on the outside of the OB line. This is one of the holes where that particular OB line has come in significantly. She's still inside of circle one. That drive from Henna was so spectacular that once again, she's throwing, a, it looked like either a mid or a putter to the basket and most girls are doing a sidearm with a fairway driver. Low from Tatar. Second shot for Own on hole six. A little low releases from Own. See the wind swirling. I've seen a lot of low shots, whether that's conservative play, being a little bit intimidated by the wind, I'm not sure. See for birdie. Characteristic miss.
Nate, I want to send it down to you. It obviously looks beautiful out there today. How much is the wind affecting throws and putts right now? Yeah, it is beautiful down here, Charlie. Low humidity, even for Houston. And the wind is definitely playing a factor. It started off pretty calm, but right now it's 12 miles per hour. And when it gusts, it gets upwards of 20. And it's not necessarily straight line either. So it's, it's kind of swirling. And there'll be moments where it's really calm, not affecting the putts. And then moments where the player is like waiting because it's swirling right in front of them so definitely going to play a large factor for the rest of this round second shot for Salonen on hole six notice how you can see the basket here for six last year there was a very large tree obstructing the view of the basket Henna hit the tree on her approach shot, but still has this for birdie. And she knows after such a great tee shot that it's painful to come up empty. There's the mulch pile. That's where there was a very large mature tree last year, making this hole much more difficult. Deanna getting caught up in that tree. It looked like it fell just behind that tree, which is unfortunate. It's gonna be a lot harder to have an arm swing from that position. Excellent shot by Kristen. Weatherman gives it a good run off the top of the basket on the birdie look. Beautiful straight line. Gannon. Well, I got some wildlife out here at Brock Park. And what we're hearing is that this turtle has just given birth and there are baby turtles in the area. So they're marking the ground here to make sure that nobody disturbs the baby turtles. So I guess this is gonna become a relief area perhaps. What hole sure is this on, Charlie? I need to see these turtles. <laughs> I, I actually don't know what hole that was on, but Nate, you got to get on the case. 16 is what we're hearing, Nate. So you can sprint ahead and check it out, and then uh, then we'll we'll get you back on the feature card. Yep. All right. So the. More, more more notes from our producer. The uh, turtle laid its eggs. So there are no baby turtles yet. Just the promise of baby turtles in the future. Here's Gannon. She pulled that right. That's the way that you want to air, though, because it is more generous OB-wise on that right side than it is if you go short and left. Goggins in for par. Just holds on on that right side.
That was a pretty good line by Kristen. She is appears to be in circle one. Edge of the circle for Ananda. To the seventh, Salonen. Send it down to Nate. Nate, uh, what's, what's the ruling here with the disc inside of the tree? Yes, yeah, so she's not going to mark the disc, and she was just kind of asking her card mates where exactly she should and is allowed to place her foot, and it's not too inconvenient. It's just about a foot off the ground. power for not being able to use your lower body there. To the 16th, elevated basket for Blomroos, looking for birdie. A lot of misses left for Blomroos. Anakin Sten just got three straight on 12 through 14 and she has taken over the number one spot on the leaderboard. Monica's not having any putting problems. Notice she's got 100% C1X today. Scoggins on the seventh. putting for par. Here's Evelina's second. She clipped a tree late in the flight of her tee shot. And more tree trouble leaves her short. Long distance birdie look for Gannon. You could tell that was low out of her hand. Shot for Scoggins on seven. Well done. Just a little too high there for Ananda. Comebacker for Blomroos for par. Sneaks it home. So remains bogey free. Sitting in solo second. Kristen still looking for her first birdie. Wow. You can see the frustration after that miss. It was right on line, but it's just not sharp. And obviously that one was a little bit too high. So 
So four straight pars for Tatar. So just one birdie so far for the feature card through four holes. And Kristen's been dealing with some various ailments, back pain, and she posted over on Instagram celebrating Missy Gannon, but look at her ankle. That was due to an unfortunate run-in with fire ants. Not what you want. In fact, she had such a reaction to it that she woke up Sunday morning of the women's championship with a fever. Wow. I, I got to think that they don't have fire ants in Estonia. But I don't know. But, uh, Nate, I want to check in with you. How is Kristen feeling this week? The ankle seems like it's looking better. But is she still dealing with the rest of the ailments that she's been going through? You know, it's hard to speculate if she's feeling any back pain. Uh, just her energy levels look great. And I know so far it's been frustrating to not connect on those putts, but all of those putts are, are committed. They just were honestly pretty tough spots with uh, the wind direction right now. So hard to speculate too early if anything is really wrong with her. Yeah, she definitely looks like she's comfortable throwing well. She has no trouble getting through that very tiny gap. Salon and lays it up. She'll have a tap in par. Well done for Missy. At only 198 feet, it can be hard to get the disc on the ground soon enough to skip short enough to be near the basket. To the 17th, Blumroos. Aggressive play on the peninsula hole. Ooh, and that does not find its way back in bounds, and she gets the red flag. So Hannah likely looking at a bogey. Scoggins knocks down a birdie putt. She's now at four under through seven. Ideal ground play there from Carey's second shot. Here's Blomroos throwing from having just gone out of bounds. That was her third, so she'll be putting for bogey. And she does knock down that bogey putt from inside 10 feet, so she now drops into a tie for third. So good birdie chances here for feature card, Gannon. Little low, didn't catch enough chain to stay in the basket, but boy, that was online. Nice pace. Yeah. 
First birdie of the tournament for your defending champ, Sai Ananda. And that gets Kristen on the board. So she moves to one under. Five straight pars for Missy Gannon. To the 18th. Bring it up. Oh. Luck Lorenzen puts it in on the 18th over the water. The softest baby skip ace I've maybe ever seen. That's the way to finish the round. Luke gets to six under with the eagle ace on 18. Wow, what a bounce back after a bumpy front nine. Six under in the back. And let's take a look at this replay powered by Nakua. Lorenzen. Just perfect. The green and the red flag there in the background. <laughs> you know what that means. You get them both. <laughs> what a shot. I think the ideal placement is on the left side just because it's easier to land there. But where Kristen is on the right side, there's also a very nice alleyway towards the pin for a potential birdie on this hole. to see that fade back at the very end because that was flirting with the out of bounds line on the right. You can see the wind action bouncing the disc through the air. Here's Sten and that's four birdies in a row for Annik and Sten. That much puts her at nine under par. She's now two strokes clear of Sarah Hokum in second place. That's her second batch of four birdies in a row today. She did the same on holes four through seven. 100% inside the circle today. One for two from circle two. Missy Gannon on six. Checking in on the leaderboard. Sarah Hokum just birdieing on 16. Some great shooting. I was expecting to see a lot of birdies tape, but this is impressing me. Not nearly this level of field last year when it was a silver event, but Texas State's longtime national tour event back on the Elite Series. Look at this, I mean, you've got almost 30 players under par on the course right now. Nearly 60% of the division under par. Gettable distances too. Yes, very appropriate for the FPO division.
What a fantastic shot from Kristen in the wind. Short putt left for birdie for Tatar. Trying to go back to back. Scoggins teeing off on eight. Eight is the dog leg left with the mandatory right at the corner. There's quite a bit of a low ceiling here, forcing you to throw low, and Missy threw just a little bit too low, didn't have the distance to get to the pin. After the bogey on the 17th, Blomroos on 18, just gets over the water's edge. Just gonna have about a 35 foot putt from there. To the eighth, Salonen. Missing the Mando. Offline for Sai, probably taking away the birdie opportunity. Beautiful shape through that alleyway. Deanne putting it very close to the basket. Then laying up, gonna take her par on 16. The best round out here last year was eight under. There was at least one eight under in each of the rounds here at Brock Diamond. I think it's a pretty good chance we're gonna see double digits at some point this weekend, if not today. I, I agree with that. Long look for Gannon. It's her fourth circle two putt today. She's 0 for 4. Blomroos looking for a birdie on the 18th to close out her round. Tough wind conditions on a putt of that length. Got pushed down, so she'll tap in for par and finish the day at six under. Sten takes the par on 16. Trying to get to 10 down, two holes to play. Goggins there and Sayananda taps in. We're going to take a quick break. Anakin Sten leading the way here in round one at Texas States.
I'm David Wiggins, and in 2016, I set the disc golf world distance record with a throw of 1,108 feet. Whether I'm out in the field measuring a max distance throw, or on the course checking the elevation change for an upshot, I rely on the Eagle Seeker 360 to give me accurate distances. It's the only rangefinder on the market that measures in feet, yards, and meters. It's USB-C rechargeable and features a lithium-ion battery. Visit EagleSeeker360.com to get yours today. Throw A measured 66 miles per hour and 358 feet. Throw B 69 miles per hour and 456 feet. Similar effort yet 98 feet difference. But why? The answer is proper body mechanics and technique. And this is why the Power Disc Golf Academy has brought on Ezra Aderhold to be your distance coach. Ezra's lessons will help you identify and fix the problems in your swing so that you can add more distance to your throws this week. Stop landing short. Join today at PowerDGA.com. I don't flex, I'm success. I don't flex, flex. I'm super stoked about my new bag line. I'm actually still rocking the very first Voyager Pro I got when I joined MVP over two and a half years ago. So I'm stoked to get some new bags and some personalized ones just for me. We got three awesome colorways picked out. The James Conrad World Champion patch right on the front is such a cool touch to me. It's kind of reminiscent of the artwork on the stock Nomad. It'll be an awesome chance for fans to support me and, and to rock some new colorways on the Voyager bags with this release. Cheers to morning walks and upshots at sunset, to good rounds and bad, to high fives and nice shots, to the TDs and AMs that make this game what it is, to beating your rating or your first ace. Cheers to the game we love, but most importantly, to having fun. Cheers to disc golf. Let's go. Let's grow. Lone Star Disc. Live coverage of the Texas State Disc Golf Championships. Round number one continues here on the Disc Golf Network. Kristen, went up a little short. Seeing a lot of throws get pushed down into the ground right now, it feels we like. We have, this particular hole also has a low ceiling, which encourages the players to throw a little bit lower. Good distance on that shot. She's off to the left. There are quite a few trees in the middle of this fairway. She may be forced to throw out over the out of bounds and bring it back in toward the pin. That needs to come back to the right or it is gonna be, yes, that is out of bounds. Back with your leader, Anakin Sten. One of four Europeans inside the top 10 at the moment. Hole 17 sounded surrounded very closely by out of bounds. It's only 15 feet from the left side of the pin, 18 from the right side of the pin. That was a safe shot. She is not out of bounds. Played it to the short side of the OB. Sinajini knocks it down on hole eight for par. This 
Kristen, the best forehand approach thrower in the world right now? Oh, I think so. Absolutely. Another great shot into the wind. A little bit of an early release, came out early. So again and again, we'll have a long look for Birdie. Par for Salonen after she missed the Mando. So nice recovery. She remains at four down. It's another birdie for Owen Scoggins. Five under through eight. Picture perfect from Sarah Hokum. Sarah having a fantastic day. Slides up to just outside the circle. Hole seven is very similar to uh, the holes that we've seen previously. It's it's a peninsula hole. It's par four. A little bit of a low clearance. Oh, Scoggins is dialed right now. Layup from Sten. She's going to tap in for par. Salonen on the ninth. Pretty much exactly how you want to throw that. That was perfect. As was that. That's going to get Deanne Carey to three under. Par putt for Sai after she went out of bounds off the tee shot. Got it. Excellent save. Her first circle two make of the day. Dancing the disc for Missy Gannon. At least the second putt of Missy's that really could have stayed in, but the wind did not allow it to. Excellent putt from Kristen. Her third straight birdie.
talking about CTP on Scoggins, taps in the birdie, but Evelina a little bit closer. A couple birdies. And they're climbing the leaderboard. Hot shooting in these sunny conditions. We haven't even said Holland Hanley's name and she's up into a tie for second place. Holland just birdied 14, 15, and 16. Five under through nine. Get there, get there. Oh. Nice. <laughs> Maybe a little luck on that particular hole, uh, getting through the canopy. So here we're looking at hole eight, it's par four. This is a dog leg left. You need to progress forward down the fairway far enough so that you can then turn and see the basket. Now, the Mando on this particular hole is farther to the right than it was last year. So a couple of the girls were able to make the Mando off the tee. And if they don't realize that that is farther down the fairway, it might come up and bite them. Uh, once you make it past the Mando, you have a straight shot at the basket. If you have to curve something around the Mando, it's gonna be very hard to get far enough as the basket is another 245 feet beyond the Mando. This playing is the second hardest hole on the course. Just two birdies today. Valerie Mondahano and Owen Scoggins. What a good disc. Beautifully placed. Shot from Carey. Scoggins. Maybe a half run there. That is the danger of this hole, going a little bit too long. Puts you in the rough. There's not out of bounds out there, but it's going to um, take enough off your your next shot that it's going to be really hard to get a break. You good, you good. Gannon, seven straight pars. Back to 18, saw the drive from Sarah Hokum. This is left for Birdie, trying to tie the lead. Maybe knew it was to tie the lead. Here you see Missy's a little shy of the Mando, so she's going to have to curve something around that. Missing the rough on the right and still getting far enough down there that she's going to have a putt. And she does it very, very nicely. This could be one of her best looks for birdie today. Putt from a similar distance that she missed left side. Yep, yep. Own tapping in for par. This is the first of two mound greens. 
last year. The basket was on the very top of both of the mounds, making them extremely difficult. Here's Stan on the 18th. Let's go. Great job. Fabulous. I, I don't see the drop zone. Does it well, just mean you can go to the drop zone? Or? Oh. Yeah, I guess let me pull up the rules on this book first. Yeah. I feel like I'll just take it from the water. We have an official following of it? Um, I cannot get the water. I can take it just a little bit behind. I think I have to get over there to see actually where the line is. So Nate, clearly she's in standing water on the right hand side of this fairway. Is this delineated in the caddy book? Oh, it's certainly going to be casual water. Yeah, it's just the it. relief directly behind it would put her further into the woods, so I think she's deliberating whether or not she wants to just immerse in the water or back it up and have a little bit harder of a lie. Either way, she's kind of pinched on her angle to the pin and the wind is kind of ripping left to right head for her. Would be a pretty miraculous up and down. going to take some relief and that's not ideal. Tried to get a little bit aggressive on getting farther forward on that and uh, I think that was a little bit of a mental mistake. Holland Hanley heading towards 18 and she's bogey free all the way up to a tie for second after the turkey on holes 14, 15 and 16. A little short for Deanne. To the 11th, Salonen. That is a huge drive from Salonen. Plenty of room to unleash on this particular fairway. Getting that far down will give her a nice look. She's on the correct side of the mound, the side that the basket is placed on. It was a good line to get around that Mando. We heard Nate say that the wind was head left to right, so that was really pushing it down. So it would have been awfully hard to get it basket high. Tricky stance for Ananda. It's a decent effort. She'll have a very long look for par. Anakin Sten on the green of 18, and she will tap in to get to 10 under par and set a new course record here at Brock Diamond. What a day for Anakin. Just one bogey, but piling up the birdies.
Second shot for Scoggins on 11. She has the mound between her and the basket. That's going to be a very tough putt. Paul Handley on 18. Uh oh. Yeah. Gets through. The fear of hitting those high branches is that it then ricochets back into the water. Kristen will be left with a par putt to the 11th. Evelina with a huge drive, 630 foot par four. She'll have to go up and over the hill, but a birdie look for Evelina. There's five birdies on the hole so far today. Nanda puts it close while she'll, where she'll have a bogey putt. Long range birdie look for Deanne Carey. Falls just short of the chains. Missy Gannon looking for her first birdie. was a little low too, but she made it in the basket. So she gets to one under, certainly limiting the damage. Although she's well off the pace right now as Kristen taps in for par. Ananda drops back down to even after the bogey. Den, course record 10 under, will it hold? We'll find out. This is the game changer. Step onto the course with the pure premium disc golf bag, adding a touch of glamorous flair to your play. Don't miss the exclusive pre-sale at puredisc.net for the best price. Upgrade your game, upgrade your look. This weekend, orders over $40 ship free, or come here to our Bloomington, Illinois store, where we opened up one year ago this weekend. Shop us online, powergripusa.com. I think this golfing can improve our community in many ways. It brings people together. That maybe some of these kids who feel a little bit lost could find something like this golf, find friends, find people to come together and play the sport. Encouraging people to work together kids to know one another, love one another. A way for these kids to have a really fun thing to do together. I think that's what we need in the world, love one another and do life together. The 2024 Prodigy Signature Series are here. 
the Signature Series explores the evolution of flight. Get yours March 22nd on ProdigyDisc.com and at your... Again, coming off the birdie. Yet again, another low shot there. Tricky par putt for Own Scoggins. But not a problem. Own remains at six down. She has not missed a putt yet. Kristen catching a limb on the way by. Excellent shot from Deanne. Beautiful turnover line by Sai. Back to 18, Kat Merch, who is at eight under. She said it for us. So Merch, who's had a lot of birdies today, is gonna likely take her third bogey of the day after going OB. Missy lays up. Yep. Side with a chance to get back under par. Beautiful birdie. At only 291 feet, that was likely a mid-range that she turned through that left side gap. Beautifully done. We had Carey in for the birdie. That gets her up into a tie for 13th. Slow start for Kristen and Missy. Kristen finishes up three under in the front nine. Now, keep in mind that at the beginning of the day when some of these other players started, the wind was six, seven miles per hour, and now it's 16. So that does come into play on these holes. Could be something we see throughout the weekend. Early cards getting a bit of an advantage with lower wind in the morning. To hole 12, Valerie Mondahano putting for par. Nice make from Mondahano from 36 feet. So she remains bogey free, and hey, that, that was birdie. So that puts her at six under.
hole 10, one of the tighter holes on the course. There is an OB line down the right side. The most common play is to play that right side and go for a skip back towards the basket. Just three birdies on hole 10. Erica Stinchcomb, Jessica Weiss, and Valerie Mondahano. A little bit too tight. She hits the first tree in the middle. sidearm, which is actually more open, but she didn't bring it back in, and she is quite a ways away from the pin. She's got a lot more turn out of her hand than I think she anticipated. Scoggins. is the shortest par four on the course. It's also the most unintuitive. Uh-oh. Look at this. That is massive. That is a huge drive from Salonen. That will be a long eagle look for Evelina if she wants to run it. This is not an easy approach here. She still has quite a ways to go to the pin. Oh. Let's take another look at this drive from Salonen. So you have to find a route through these trees, which she did magically. And she has so much power that she was able to get beyond the last of the trees, which I have not yet seen on that hole. <laughs> Owen checking out the arm. Fantastic drive. So she's in circle two, looking at an eagle. wrapping up her day at nine under. In the break, we saw her make the birdie putt on 18. 10 under, currently 10.05 rated for Sten. That seems light. It seems like that should be much, much higher than that. Fire there from Scoggins. Carry for Birdie. Layups are significantly easier this year on this hole. The basket used to be on the very top of the mound, really requiring players to lay up onto the mound for a relatively safe putt at the basket. This year they don't have to be on the mound at all for that type of a putt. Is he sticks the par putt?
Perry makes good on the par. So it's going to be pars all around on the difficult hole 10. Goggins, another half bid, she'll have a tap in for par, and what a performance she had back at the Open at Austin, as it's been a very compelling start to the FBO season. It certainly has, owned with that record-breaking finish with the highest rating ever. Kick things off with Evelina winning in Florida, then Kristen joined the Tour of Waco, kept up her winning ways. But uh, anybody who thought Kristen was just going to keep dominating, not so. Owen Scoggins, 10-27 rated for the event, a record. And four straight 1,000 rated average event ratings for the FPO winners on tour this season. That is a record. Evelina just missing the eagle putt. What a shot. I mean, this is inside circle one. And almost a little too confident. We saw I like that that was an aggressive run at it. Carries tee shot here. We saw Evelina missing high a little bit last week at the U.S. Women's Championship when she was chasing Missy Gannon in that final round. I'd much rather see her miss high than low because that feels like she's being more aggressive and has a little bit more confidence in, this, in the stroke. didn't quite as much turn on that as she wanted. You could hear she was worried that it might skip left and potentially um, go out of bounds. But we've seen this grass has been very grabby today and there haven't been a lot of skips. to the 13th, coming off the birdie on 12. <laughs> Too much power almost for Evelina. She goes past the basket. And take a look at what we've seen so far this season. Really raising the bar for the women's division, what it takes for the victory. There were eight tournaments last year on the Elite Series or at the Majors where the FPO winner averaged over a 1,000 for the event. There were four for four to start this year. And Owen setting the all-time record at 1029. And here's Scoggins on the 13th. just there is out of bounds over there and it looks to me like Kristen has crossed that line
safe, but she's got that mound between her and the basket. On the 14th, Valerie Mondahano. She's on the correct side. She have a little bit of a long putt, but she will have a look at it. Birdie putt there for Evelina, just a little high again. But so much more committed on the green than she has been in the last two seasons. Nanda should have a look. Perfect on the putting green as she is now three shots off the lead up into a tie for fourth. Great gallery for a round one Friday. It's also a good Friday. Folks might have the day off. Deanne's still going to have a bit of a challenge with that putt. 14th, Mondahano, second shot. Inside the circle for Valerie. So indeed OB for Kristen. bit of a roll away, but she's probably still inside of 20. Shouldn't be a problem. Long looks for Missy Gannon today. And due to the heavy winds, we've seen her lay up more often than she's than we expect from her. Ananda just chooses to lay up as well. putt from Deanne. It's an 
uncommon putting situation. Side stance, have to clear a hill, basket maybe level with you. Exactly. There are a lot of strange characteristics to that putt. Kristen looking at a bogey here. Are you waiting for the wind to die down? Nice concentration. Did you notice the spectator directly behind the basket was actually taking practice putts as if he was putting a couple times while she was lining that up? That might also be why she was waiting. Ooh, dangerous there from Gannon, but she gets it over the cage and another par for Missy Gannon. Scoggins. Hole 14. This is a big left to right dogwood. Going in good position for another sidearm into the pin. Up on the green. Ellie Midling knocks down the birdie. That's four straight. Valerie Mondahano for birdie. She moves to six under par, tied for sixth. Back to the tee on 14, Evelina. Another huge drive by Evelina. Take a look at hole 12. Hole 12, this one has changed a little bit from last year. Visually, there used to be a tree that was horizontally down right in front of the tee that forced you to throw just a little bit up in the air. Uh, you can throw something that's a little bit slow, just straight. You don't have to go around the corner right away, but if you want to go around the corner, uh, I apologize. I'm still on the hole that we just saw Evelina throw. A hole 12, but this is a par four. So this is the one that Evelina also uh, throw a great shot on. Uh, you have to find your way through these trees. You can go straight. There is an OB line. It is a little bit more generous than it was last year. If you go straight, then you don't, you take all those trees out of play. If you go the route that we saw Evelina, snake it through those trees, then you may ha might have to find something through the trees on your way to the basket. There is also a Mando on the very right side. It almost never comes into play. Uh, if the men were playing this hole, it might because they might consider going up and over with a spike hyzer. Back to the 14th, Scoggins. Parks it. That's gonna get her to eight under par. So this hole 12, I consider this the most unintuitive hole in the course because you can't really see the line if you're trying to go through those trees. It makes Evelina's shot all the more impressive. Exactly. Another low tee shot from Gannon. Second shot on the 14th for Salonen. Just gets onto the safe side of the line. Left that a little wide left. Well, she got an uncharacteristic backward skip. I think she was expecting that to skip towards the basket, towards the pin. Ellie Midling. The explosive throwing youngster. Four straight birdies. That's quite a ways off to the right. That's going to pinch her next shot off, and it's going to be hard for her to approach the pin for a birdie. Missy.
Very well done, using that slope by the basket as a backstop on her approach. Back over to the 14th, Salonen putting for birdie. Over adjustment, a little low. At least she's still on line and still has good pace. Scoggins to get to eight down. That puts her into a tie for third with Sarah Hokum. Bone has four holes to play. She's two shots back. Excellent approach there from Tatar. We go to the 15th, Mondahano. There is an out of bounds line on that left hand side. I can't tell how close she is to it. Deanne getting caught up in the little trees and keeping her from the green on that approach shot. So Mondahano was safe on the tee shot. Here's her second. Left it a little bit low, so she'll have to pitch up for a par. Fighting her way through the trees. Nice turnover approach shot around the outside. Live with Middling. Trying to get aggressive with the forehand mm -hmm. over the top but catches the branches and gets knocked down. Well, this playing is the second easiest hole on the course. This again knocks down the birdie. Even a short tee shot leaves you plenty to work with to get to the green. Carry for par. for the birdie. And a tap in for Kristen. As she gets back to three under par to do a tie for 18th. Take a look at the leaderboard. 10 under from Anakin Sten, still holding strong. Owen Scoggins chasing but our leader right now is in the clubhouse. Let's hear from Anakin Sten right now. All right, 
here in the clubhouse at the 2024 Texas State Championships with Anik and Sten. Anik, and this is the first time we've talked to you this season. How would you evaluate your season so far after three events? Well, I would say that two out of four in total so far has been good. And but I did feel like a bit a bit down after my last round last week. So just coming here and have such a good first round on this course, it feels really good. So you're coming in with a score of 10 under par. <laughs> As we were walking over here, I know you kind of had this look of surprise on your face. Can you kind of describe the round and, you know, did you expect to be able to shoot so well out here today? Well, I did for like, I usually don't play practice rounds like I play tournament round, but I did last um, yesterday and then I shot nine down and I was like, well, I think maybe I can score good here because I know that the scores would be low because I feel like this course is scorable, but actually doing it in a tournament round, that's something else. And yeah, I, I don't think I've had any rounds so far in a tournament that just feels that easy. So on that <laughs> note, you're coming in again, 10 under par. We still have two rounds to go this weekend, but how good does it feel to come in with such a great first round? It's just amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Excellent. Anik and Stan heading into round two with a score of 10 under par at the 2024 Texas State Championships. What a for Anik Stan. It's the most birdies in a single round of her career in an Elite Series or a Major. The previous best was seven at the U.S. Women's Championship last weekend. My goodness, the power on display. Mondahano just coming up short on the long birdie bid. Evelina threw so far that she almost needs to wait for the par four to clear before she can drive. <laughs> Side, turning that over a little bit, finding the rough on the right. And needed to pull that a little bit wider to have it finish right at the basket, but she is on the edge of circle one, still has an opportunity for a birdie. Middling for birdie, off the pole. I liked Deanne's line there, but she was just a little bit too tall, catches the canopy. Dog in second. This hole was also made considerably easier, the basket. It used to be all the way at the end of that peninsula, and now it's just tucked around the corner. Great shot from Mondahano. Back to 15, Salonen. Left it short. Time to check in with our keys for closing presented by Black Ink Discs. Stay focused. There's a lot of repetitive shots out here. Make sure that you focus on each one of them. Uh, don't take anything for granted. Some of the finishing holes look easy, but they still have teeth. And hold on to your equity. A uh, lot of people under par, and they don't want to 
give away any strokes at the end. I want to keep everyone that they've gotten. Great stuff, Juliana. Those are the keys for closing presented by BlackInkDiscs.com, the premium disc golf store. Salonen for birdie. Left it just a little too short. And there's Emily Weatherman knocking it down. She's three under par. On the pitches up. 15 feet left for par. Oh my goodness. I don't think Owen can believe it. Her first circle one miss of the day. Salon in for par. Scoggins will have to settle for par on what is an almost routine clockwork make for her. Again, and not testing it, just lays up. I've seen a lot of layups. Do you think that's a good strategy on a course that's playing this easy? Well, we can't feel the wind. Um, and it's easy to look at Missy and think you're such a good putter that you should be aggressive all the time. But uh, I'm normally not critical of a layup. Safe decisions. Kristen in for the birdie. That gets her to four under. She's now tied for 12th. Par for Deanne. Ananda in for the par, and Missy will tap in for the par as well. To the 16th, Midling for birdie. Yes. Courageous, very nice putt. That's now six birdies in the last eight holes. She's up into a tie for 12th. Great putt. Another Mondahana has climbed up into fifth. Almost parking it inside the circle. We see Kristen on 14. This is the hole that I was talking about that had the horizontal tree that you had to throw over off the tee that is gone, making this visually quite a bit different. Beautiful left to right shaped shot. Back to the 16th, Salonen. Perfect.
by position there for Carey. To the 16th, Leah Sinogeny putting for birdie from distance. Oh yeah. She gets to five under par, tied for 11th. Some of the heavy hitters still out on the course. Second sitting at 10 down. Hey, even Leah Sinogeny's chasing. Knocking down the birdie. My name is Garrett Gerthy, and I'm the founder of Double G Craft Jerky. I love the fact that it's resealable. I can just get a little bit, keep my energy levels up, but not eat like a half of a meal in the middle of my round. My favorite bag is the Smash Cracked Pepper. That's my perfect salty snack. This is my go-to, the Saxon Sweet and Spicy. If this bag gets open, there's no need for the seal because I'm going to eat it all. Cheers to helping new players, to high fives and encouragement, to being a positive light while helping grow the sport. Cheers to you, Ranger team. Thank you. How about that shot from Sai a moment ago? Let's, let's watch it again. Just a turn. Off the rim. An inch lower and that would have been an eagle. Yeah, maybe half an inch. That was so close. What a shot from Ananda. Tatar. Parks it. Second shot for Valerie Mondahano on 17. She didn't try to do too much off the tee. Yeah. You see inside the circle. Taking a look at the feature card in the gallery from our Flight Factory drone. And I want you to join us for a live stream on Wednesday, April 3rd. The Dark Horse Sports Cards YouTube channel, 7 p.m. Central Time. We'll be unboxing disc golf trading cards, giving away goodies, and giving you a sneak peek at DGPT Relic Series cards 
Plus. You can bid on these one-of-one one autographed Relic Series cards on eBay between April 3rd and April 10th, and all proceeds from the auction will benefit disc golf charities. Saki Bomb Foundation, Paul McBeth Foundation, Uplay, and Edge. So check it out, Wednesday, April 3rd, 7 p.m. Central Time. Just a touch low for Carrie. She will bogey. Missy looking for her third birdie. Kristen for birdie. And that gets her to five under par. She's up to a tie for 11th. Slowly climbing the board. Sai nearly getting the eagle throw in. And it bounced off the basket to here, but she will cash in the birdie. She's now at three under. Ones Goggins birdied 16 to get her to within a stroke of our leader, Hanukkah Sten. This is a very, very skinny fairway. Own having no problems with courage going for that shot. So she's looking to become the sixth player to birdie 17 today. And she's parked. The trick is if you go for this and you go out of bounds, you really want to fly over the basket and go out of bounds left because then you have about a 12 foot putt coming back to the basket. Come on. Come on. Not quite for Evelina. She finds OB. And for as well as she's thrown it today, Feels like she's left a lot of strokes on the course. Kristen teeing off on 15. Okay, yeah. Just Shane a little bit left. That still is a fantastic position. That's an aggressive layup. I think it was our angle. It looked a little more heavy than it was. She's in a good position. These are all great shots. The farther forward and the more that you can cheat on the left-hand side without going out of bounds, the easier your line is to the pin. I want to send it down to Nate Perkins. Nate, we've seen some different kinds of courses to start this year's tour. Olympus, uh, kick us off at the Chess.com Invitational, uh, new course at Waco, a redesigned Harvey Pennock layout at Austin, and a brand new course for the U.S. Women's Championship. How does this Brock Diamond course compare to what we've seen so far this season? Yeah, you know, it's rare, Charlie, that we have a course that's specific for the FPO division. Uh, we had it last week at, at Sprinkle Valley, 
and again here at Brock. And I, I honestly feel like it's great for the division as a whole to have so much intention placed on, on all these par fours. And they certainly lean on the easier side at Brock, which I, I think is good for the game. I think it's great to have a lot of scoring and to have people deeper in the field be able to shoot in that five to 10 under par range. I think it makes it a little bit more exciting. And when the wind picks up later this weekend, the birdies that they're getting now are going to be that much more valuable. So I'm all for uh, a course where 10 under par is possible. Nate, I couldn't agree more with you on that assessment. It is such a change that I've seen over my career having a course designed specifically for the skill level of the FPL player. And I really believe that's why we're seeing all of these birdies and it's just really great to watch. Certainly a little bit of an easier climb out here compared to what we saw at Sprinkle Valley last weekend. Also an FPO design course. Well, this is an open F uh, FPO design course. That was a very wooded course that uh, hasn't had a lot of play, and I think that it will get a little bit easier through the years, um, but but much different flavor, of course. Certainly. To the 18th, Valerie Mondahano. She's tied for fifth. Needs to go, and it's on the other side safe. Long putt coming up for Mondahano. Just past the tree we can see on the right hand side of the monitor. Decent line, too low. The high reach back in the room. Very well done, keeping it tight enough to the foliage that she is very close to the basket. On the green of 18, Mondahano. Off the top. You just stay there, Barbie. So she will finish up at seven under par. Likely to be on the chase card tomorrow. much. She got a little roll out so she should have a look at the basket with a little bit of the uh, limbs in her way. Owen Scoggins now sitting tied for the lead at 10 under par. Waiting on 18. So Montahano finishes up at seven down. Tied for fifth. Back to Gannon. Another layup for Missy. It's her ninth circle two putt today. She's 0 for 9. Ananda. <laughs> to 
to the 18th. Owen Scoggins, a chance to take the outright lead. Just enough, and she'll have a look at the birdie. Miscue there by Deanne. Uh, she's in the rough. She's far enough away that she has to do a jump to get it there, and I'm not sure if the, the footing with the rough um, took her timing off, but uh, yeah, she just missed that one completely. Really no harm, no foul. If she can make the comebacker, it's for par. Got it. Good putting today from Deanne. She's now seven for seven from Circle One X. Kristen for another birdie. She's kind of sneaking up the leaderboard right now. That is four birdies in a row for Tutsar. She's now tied for sixth. Back to 18, Salonen. Oh, wind knocking that down. Ooh. She should feel fortunate that it didn't knock it down just a little bit more. Barely gets over. Hole 16, 267 feet. This is a par three. There is a nice straight shot through this alleyway with either a fairway driver or an overstable mid that then skips at the end left towards the basket. There is out of bounds behind the pin. It's 35 feet behind to the, the rough and then it sort of tumbles down into the water. So if you are a little bit too aggressive, that could come into play. See those yellow flags if you weren't with us earlier they had to mark off a part of this fairway where a turtle laid eggs Short there from Kristen. Here's Ananda. Can't help but think that Kristen must have hit something in order to end up where she is.
A little too straight for Deanne, but she will have a long putt. Earlier today, we did see a member of the team checking in and marking off this area where the turtle eggs were laid. We saw Mother Turtle walking away. I'm sure she'll be back. So here's Evelina from the drop zone on 18. She was, uh, d although she got across the water, there is a line and she was short of it. So she takes a stroke as Kristen lays up underneath the basket. surprising that nobody on the lead card was able to find circle one from the tee on this 267 foot hole. all around back to the 18th Bone Scoggins trying to get to 11 under and take the solo lead and you know it look at the scorecard bogey free for Own Scoggins now your solo leader one stroke ahead of Anakin Sten what a day for Own and, and she even had a short circle one miss could have been an extra birdie. Tap in for Kristen. For par. Across the board here. So two holes left to play for our feature card. Can anyone make up ground on Own Scoggins? We'll find out. Behold the Eagles Crossing Disc Golf Course. A sanctuary where the ordinary transforms into the extraordinary. As each disc takes flight, destiny intertwines with the flight path. But beware, brave souls, for the course harbors challenges that even the boldest must confront. Yet, fear not, for victory and camaraderie are your companions on this voyage. Visit EaglesCrossingDiscGolf.com You Play Disc Golf is your passport to teaching and learning the game. Our mission? To teach disc golf and make it accessible to everyone worldwide. From Alaska to Africa, Guatemala to Canada, and beyond, You Play Disc Golf has spread its wings teaching the love of the game across the globe. Get involved in our movement to make disc golf a universal joy. Explore youplaydiscgolf.org and join us in helping people find flight.
Welcome back to live coverage here on the Disc Golf Network of the opening round of the Texas State Disc Golf Championships. Kristen Tatar, a little short on 17. She'll have a look from circle two. That was likely by design. This is a very, very skinny fairway. Out of bounds. Just six birdies on 17. Third hardest hole on the course. Great shot from Gannon. Take a look at hole 17. This is a 297 foot par three. Though the distance is very gettable by everybody in the division, there is no shame laying this one up as it is clearly a peninsula and it falls away slightly and subtly on the back, the right and the left of the basket. So even if you come in very close to the pin, it's quite possible that you could skip OB to the left. So many people will play short like we saw Kristen. She's close to circle one and she is confident enough that she can put that putt into the basket and still get a birdie with a layup. It makes own Skagen shot here so impressive. Carry third shot after going OB. Work left. Well, this is so skinny that it can be intimidating just to try to lay up to this basket. Deep circle two for Kristen. Wind swirling. Swirling, maybe too weak of a word. Wow. That was an impressive run. I, I'm surprised that she got it up in the air that high with such strong winds, but she controlled it beautifully and she's ran out of the pin. So committed from Gannon, despite the win, and just a little bit too high. too high for Deanne Carey. We're going to take a quick break, but you won't miss anything. Stay with us. To reinvent means looking to the future, seeing greatness for a new generation, with the passion to perform and the talent to win. win, win. 
The time is now. The future is here. You've seen them in the hands of professionals, helping them compete at the highest level. Whale Sacks is a female-owned small business, handmade in the USA. We are dedicated to outstanding grip for all disc golfers. Cheers to helping new players, to high fives and encouragement, to being a positive light while helping grow the sport. Cheers to you, Ranger team. Thank you. Introducing Fractal Line Discs from Prodigy. Fractal is the new visual treatment joining Spectrum, Glimmer, and Glow as an additional aesthetic variation. Fractal Line Discs. We love and understand plants. We love and understand plants. Let our passion excite you too. Well, if you've been watching on DGN Pro today, you've enjoyed an ad-free experience. So if you are not yet signed up for the Disc Golf Network or you're on the standard plan, consider upgrading to Pro, but all subscribers get 60 frames per second streaming, live DVR, faster playback. So hit that QR code right now to learn more about new features and plans and subscribe to Disc Golf Network today. Don't miss a moment. On the 18th, Tatar. That is OB. Almost identical to where Evelina Salonen's disc ended up. I was just going to say that. So that goes long for Gannon. She is out of bounds. So she just saw Kristen throw a little bit too low and the wind helped keep that down. So I think that's what had her throwing that a little bit higher up in the air and that therefore then pushed her out of bounds as it skipped forward. Circle two putt coming up for Ananda. Nice shot from Carey. What a solid day for Deanne Carey. Save for the double bogey on 17. Take a look at beautiful overhead imagery from our Flight Factory drone. And you can go to Flight Factory Discs website. Use code Austin for 10% off this weekend. Sale ends Sunday at midnight. So we are going to send it now down to the clubhouse where Owen Scoggins, your current leader, is standing by.
All right, back in the clubhouse at the 2024 Texas State Championships with Owen Scoggins. Owen sitting at 11 under par after round one. Did you think 11 under was going to be attainable going into today's round? I was thinking, um, I talked with my friend like two, three days ago. We were thinking like, um, we asked each other what is going to be a good number. I said eight to ten down. Um, I think it's a hot round. I didn't know like I'm gonna shot 11 down. I have no idea. I'm thinking maybe just like even four or five down for me is great today because it's so windy and I have a hard time putting. But somehow I don't know what's going on. Maybe I put it close enough and I can putt I guess today. <laughs> So coming into this week, a little bit of a gear shift from the course last week. Mm -hmm. Last week, we were kind of deep in the woods. This week, a lot of open holes. Mm -hmm. Can you talk about kind of the preparation and sort of some of the differences between the two courses coming into this week? Oh, the upshot is way easier. Even you go to the, even you off the fairway, the upshot is still like big open for you. You can throw back hand side arm. It's compared with last week, this is open course. It's, it's just throwing far, good upshot, make the putt. Like I said, like um, it's it's gonna be good number for this weekend for us. Um, I can see somebody like shot 14 down in this course, if it's not windy. But today is kind of windy. I think maybe 11, 12 might be good. But like I said, it's so easy this course. Uh, compared with last week, last week I don't know what's going on over there. But I I love it. I love both course. Yeah. So 11 under par, 11 birdies. You are bogey free. I know it's tough, but do you think there's anything you could do better tomorrow? You mentioned 14 under par. Like, what are you thinking going into tomorrow? Oh, man, I don't know. I, I have a hard time. Tomorrow, I'm thinking, I, I don't know. I have a hard time to beat 11. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking maybe tomorrow if maybe 7 or 8 down should be good for me. I, I don't think I can shot 11. Who knows? Um, but if the wind went down, it, it might be. It might be, some, like I said, somebody can shot like 13. Um, I'm looking for a 7 or 8 down for me tomorrow. If I can do better than that, would be great. All right, Owen Scoggins sitting in first place here at the 2024 Texas State Championships. Good luck tomorrow, Owen. Thank you. Scoggins. Juliana, you think we could see a 14? I don't think it's completely out of the question, but I'm not expecting it. It'll be a very special round. But a great, great score today from Owen Scoggins. Nanda just lays it up. She will tap in and finish up at two under for the day. Birdie chance for Deanne Carey. Fell out of her hand a little bit. Nobody from our feature card will return on the lead card tomorrow. I don't think anybody on our feature card will be on this chase card tomorrow yeah. either. That's a great point. Gannon takes the bogey. She drops to two down. Nanda in for par. Kristen. Still in the hunt at five under, but work to do. It's been the story for her the last couple of tournaments. As that wraps up our round number one, a beautiful look at Brock Park from overhead. Owen Scoggins leads the way at 11 under. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back. Pound's the best of the best. It's the quality, the craftsmanship, the vision for what a bag could be. Let's start from the beginning. I didn't choose Pound, I chose Levi. I trusted Levi to make the best bag possible. He's always trying to innovate. He wants it to be perfect. And I think he's the kind of guy that nothing's ever perfect. I trust the product. I trust the people behind the product. At this point, I don't think anyone's disputing that it's the best made bag.
Throw A measured 66 miles per hour and 358 feet. Throw B 69 miles per hour and 456 feet. Similar effort yet 98 feet difference. But why? The answer is proper body mechanics and technique. And this is why the Power Disc Golf Academy has brought on Ezra Aderhold to be your distance coach. Ezra's lessons will help you identify and fix the problems in your swing so that you can add more distance to your throws this week. Stop landing short. Join today at PowerDGA.com. With 20 years of the educational disc golf experience, disc golf is now a mainstream activity in physical education across the nation. 150,000 lightweight golf discs, 267 permanent campus courses installed, and thousands of partner programs in all 50 states. As a 100% publicly funded charity, Edge Disc Golf couldn't do it without you. Please join our mission to reach and teach the next 3 million young disc golfers. It was quite the day for Ones Goggins, your leader after round one of the Texas State Disc Golf Championships, 11 under par. Absolutely dialed in, Juliana. Exactly, she gained over seven strokes tee to green. She was first in that statistic and we usually expect her to make it up on the green. Today, it was off the tee. But still, fantastic on the green. Hit some big putts from circle one and circle two. But just the control, I mean, this is exactly what we saw at Austin in her record-setting performance. It sure is. It is reminiscent of that. Finishing it up on 18. A little bit of air bounce happening. Skips up onto the flat, and you know it. She knocks it down. Taking advantages of the opportunities that avail her. And probably the best drive we saw on 17 all day. If you want to hear more analysis, make sure to tune into Tournament Central 30 minutes before the start of the MPO broadcast this afternoon. Uh, Nate Perkins will break it all down for you on TC. Salonen, as we welcome you back inside of our broadcast booth, Charlie Eisenhut alongside Juliana Corver. Thanks for being with us today. And J.K. Own able to get past Annika Sten late in that round with birdies on 17 and 18. She said she felt like 8 to 10 under would be like one of the hot rounds. She exceeds that on a day when it was pretty blustery and windy out there. Well, she continues to not only impress us, but I think she impressed herself today. And um, it was fun to watch. And I, I did expect to see double digits this week. Uh, I'm not sure that I would have expected it with 20 mile hour winds. <laughs> So she comes in uh, around 10-15 rating so far on official. Uh, she, eight of her last 12 rounds have been over 1,000 <laughs> rated. And it just seems like every year, even though she's over 40 years old, she's eligible for Masters, she continues to raise her game. I really think now that she has played this well long enough that we can stop putting the exception there yeah, for I, her age. You're probably right. I, you're definitely right. Um, how about Annika Sten? Her, maybe her best round ever as a pro. Certainly by par the best round she's ever shot at an elite series or a major. Yeah, it, I'm excited to watch her play tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going to have so much variety on the lead card. Annika's a lefty, and we haven't seen her very much on covered. Coverage own the putting specialist, Holland, the distance specialist, and and then uh, Sarah, another sidearm specialist. So a lot of variety we're going to be in for tomorrow. 
All right, and I have a stat for you, courtesy of Stat Mando. This, by average bogeys per player during a round, this is the third lowest in the last four seasons at a major or an elite series. Only the 2023 Portland Open after the cut in round four and the 2022 U.S. Women's round two were better than what we saw today. Okay, I'm I'm going to say after the cut doesn't count. I agree. So so I'm <laughs> going to say this is the second best. So pretty amazing, and and you know we could see if scores improve tomorrow. Feels like. So, uh, yeah, what you know, Holland Hanley, Sarah Hokum also joining Scoggins and Sten. We haven't seen that much of Sarah Hokum up near the top of the leaderboard so far this season. Not this year. So uh, tomorrow's going to be a treat. It's going to be fun, you know, a totally different set of players up near the top. Cat Merch, Jessica Weiss, Hannah Blomroos, and Valerie Mondahano making up your chase card. Time to go to our OTB shot of the day. There can only be one, right? Oh, it's so easy today. It's we'll, got to be the ace. It's got to be. So let's take a look. Luca Lorenzen on 18 is our guess, and we will find out right now. If you missed it earlier... Get your cell phone out. Record this. Send it to ESPN. Get this on t- top 10. A little bit of helpful wind and into the chains. Fantastic from Lorenzen. Take a look at our broadcast times for later this afternoon. 2.30 p.m. Central. The broadcast begins with Tournament Central. Live right here on the Disc Golf Network and, of course, during round one, live on YouTube as well. And Juliana and I will be back with you tomorrow morning, 9.30 a.m. Central Time. The FPO broadcast begins. And if you can't catch the action live, of course, you can catch it on Jomez Pro. Thank you so much for being with us today. Own Scoggins has a one-shot lead over Anakin Sten heading into round number two tomorrow on Saturday. That will do it for our FPO coverage here on day one at the Texas State Disc Golf Championships presented by Lone Star Disc. We'll see you tomorrow.